The Dactyl keyboard was my first dip into real custom keyboards. Though I thought that the Dactyl Manuform was a reasonable evolution of it, I never actually built one, even though I have printed the case here. But it did not convince me because of the spiky and boxy design that came from the parametric modeling in SCAD. This is my custom design case and I call it the W Dactyl, large variant. Yes, this could indicate that I will build a smaller version in the future. I will go into more details why it looks like this in this video. But in short, it is similar to the standard Dactyl Manuform 6x6 keyboard, but with the thumb cluster from the Skiller keyboard and some other key positions, with an added track point and overall smoothened shape. That smoothened shape also covers the side of the switches and acts as a small resting spot for your hands. I know smaller keyboards are a real trend right now. Those are using the minimum amount of switches to get the most ergonomics. Because if there are no keys to reach for, you won't do weird things with your hands. That's not what I did with this board, I wanted something where I can experiment with key layouts, including number row and function row keys, without any layers. And I don't see any issue with having too many keys, it just adds more flexibility for other use cases, like having a macro row at the top that's easy to use even when your hands aren't resting on the keyboard. These are for simple things like volume control and media playback keys. On normal keyboards, this size would be comparable with a 75% case, just because it has the number row and the function row. Also, this keyboard is a permanent resident on my desk now, and as it's not growing in width, I don't see any drawbacks when adding columns to the top. It will still fit the solderless hotswap 60% keyboard between the halves, and yes, it is still working. What do you expect? Consider subscribing, by the way. I wanted a shape that would feel inviting to the hands, with the areas that are touched by your palms being at the correct angle, and a flat surface to rest on slightly. I'm really trying to not use a real wrist rest, as I'm a big fan of having your hands hover over the keys to not get into too stiff positions with my shoulders and neck. All the switches should be covered from the sides, and the back should have a flat wall so my cat could not press any random function keys when she decides to take a nap on my desk. Can't blame her though. The inner side will get an edge that flows around the entire keyboard, and is most visible on the inner sides, but morphs into the small palm rest under your hand. Creating the shape I wanted was actually really difficult, and I had this project on hold for about a year until I felt capable enough to do this in Fusion 360. Here's the issue with designing this board. It's not flat, so all the tools that I used to create the other keyboards are not working here. Instead, I need to create the holes for the main body for each switch in exactly the right orientation and from there create the smooth lines wrapping around the keyboard. So Quentin from Bastard Keyboards has done an amazing job with his keyboards and was actually so nice to upload a tutorial on how he designed them. His workflow basically consists of creating a block that has a cutout for the switch, including the cutout for the hooks on them, and then moving these into the correct positions, and then using the loft tool to merge them all together and build the case with more lofts and transitioning from the keys to the bottom plate. I created an entire keyboard like this, but could not figure out a way to then get the correct spacing on the keycap to have the case hide the switches. And then there was the main problem with the creating of the smooth shape, including the hard edge on the inside. With lofts, this did not work out at all and gave me a lot of unexpected geometry. So I got into the form workspace and got my first version that came close to what I had in mind. Just that it was a lot of manual work as I could not lock the lines to the exact positions that I wanted. I thought of a mostly inverted workflow. I did not create the switch holes but a negative of that, which includes the switch hooks, the block to show the height of the switch, and with those all positioned and merged into the one object, I could then start to create the sketch of the bottom part of the keyboard and then use the form workspace to build a shape around the key well and the thumb cluster. Most of it is just using drag and drop to get everything into the right places and adding additional lines to get the level of detail we need. With the crease tool, we can then create edges that flow around the keyboard. The main problem with this method is that you need to model the inside of the keyboard with the same object. And this is basically impossible if you want to have a consistent case thickness. But hey, always room for improvement. Then we can subtract the keywell and thumb cluster cutouts from the resulting body and do some minor cleanups and add the microcontroller mount, TRS port and some mounting feet under the bottom plate. The ports on this build are modular, so if you want to use this with something else than a Pro Micro, feel free to adapt it. For future versions, I would like to try another technique in the surface modeling workspace to get the precision that we want. 
There are just some quirks I need to figure out first. Printing the keyboard halves was, as with all dactyl-like keyboards, a lengthy process. Each half was printed in 25 hours, and mine are printed in white PETG, because I wanted a more robust build. In the end, I think this was a bit of an overkill, as the more abrasion-resistant PETG took me about 18 hours to sand to a smooth finish. And after some coats of primer and dark gray spray paint, there are still very slight layer lines visible at some sides of the surfaces. Overall, I really like this case. It looks and feels really nice with a very smooth surface finish. I also painted the space in the keywell and the thumb cluster black with some acrylic paint to give the keycaps a more contrast on the dark keyboard. I modeled them in Fusion 360 to have my own customizable keycaps. We will need this later on. Source files and downloads in the description and on my GitHub page as always. The wiring is just some standard hand wiring with two Pro Micros and a TRRS port attached to each. If you want to know more on how this works, check out my other videos about hand wiring. I also wanted to get rid of the mouse movement keys that I was using on my Ergodox Easy. For that I added a track point, just next to the index finger on the right half. It's not a perfect solution as I just used the track point of a broken ThinkPad USB keyboard and placed its entire PCB in the right half, then drilled a hole at the mounting position for an extension stem that allows the track point to be at the same height as the mechanical switches. It is screwed into the case with the original screws and mounting plate, and on the other side I placed the original track point rubber cap. It works flawlessly and it feels just like it should, and their only drawback is that it uses a separate USB cable. For the track point to fit, I printed a keycap with a cutout, so the slight movement on it will not interfere with normal typing. So far this is the nicest and most ergonomic keyboard I have ever used. It is also the first keyboard that I used with looped switches, and to be honest, I did not expect these to make that big of a difference, but the typing feel on the loop Gatron Reds that I'm using is really nice. I'm still excited to type on it every day. It just has such a natural feeling to it that even the keywell positions are way closer to the shape of my hand than any previous keyboards that I have used. The thumb rests on the upper center button of the thumb cluster and can reach all the thumb keys with minimal movement, unlike with the Ergodox. The track point is incredibly useful, especially when writing texts and dealing with apps that don't have shortcuts. I basically don't need to reach over to the mouse for any small things. The function row is mapped to some of the F13 to F24 keys for macro keys and media controls or mute functions, and with vial support, all of these can be changed changed instantly through the app without reflashing of the microcontroller. Also, I have only been using this board with Colmac DH, this time without home ROM modifiers as I have good enough access to the thumb keys. So if you are into building one yourself, here are all the source files, for free of course, and the firmware files with vial support, so you just flash the hex file and can start typing and customizing right away. If you need any help with build questions, drop by on the Discord, and for any feedback you have, join the discussion in the comments right here. Social links are in the description if you can't wait for a new video, or just check out the keyboard builds that I did here, or how to get the most out of your macro pad in this playlist.